our time with Uncaged. Welcome to Topple Uncaged. I'm Steve Topple and you're locked on to the UK's hottest politics and music podcast. Each week, I bring you the rawest takes on the big stories making the news, always joined by a very special guest. Then, I pleasure your mind, body and soul with the freshest, most banging international music going. Okay. I was working in the lab late one night when my eyes beheld. What's up everyone, I am Steve Topple, it is Sunday the 16th of June, and that can only mean one thing, it's this week's edition of Topple Uncaged. He did the match, he did the monster match, the monster match. It was a graveyard smash. Yes, thank you to Gail Leatherby. You can follow her on Twitter. It's at G Leatherby for the selection of this week's podcast theme music, the Monster Mash. Oh my, isn't it appropriate for the current Tory party leadership contest? A load of monsters with monstrous policies, monstrous views on the world, and quite frankly, monstrous backstories. All in an almighty putrid mashup, scrabbling around, stabbing each other in the proverbial back to become the next leader of the most monstrous party in living memory. But we've already had four monstrosities fall out of the race. Mark Harper, Esther McVeigh, Andrea Leadsom and the lovely Matt Hancock. So, who does that leave us with? Well, of course, Boris Johnson and Michael Gove are the front runners. Two men who've been involved with more beak, more beak than a bloody albatross. And who are hypocrites of the highest order when they advocate tough policies on drugs in this country. And yet, will quite happily snort a load themselves. Even more hypocritical when you look in the case of Labour's Kate Osamore, who had to resign because of her son's drug conviction. But yet they can stand for Prime Minister. One rule for one, one rule for the rest of us. It got on in a flash. They played the mash. They played the monster mash. And of course you had the furore this week over Lorraine. For tax purposes, this isn't my real name, Kelly. Throwing serious shade at Esther McVeigh live on GMB. But ultimately we're back to the same argument again. That these monsters with their monstrous policies are in the running to be the next Prime Minister. All decided by around 120,000 right-wing people. It's now the match. It's caught on in the flag. It's now the match. It's now the monster match. However, talking of monstrosities... Yes, that's right, everyone's favourite class carpet bagger, flip-flopping politician, an all-round centrist bastard, Chukaramuna, has defected now to the Lib Dems. That's three parties in nearly as many months. I mean, the most hilarious thing about Trigger and Munna going over to the Fib Democrats is looking back at his Twitter timeline, as Rachel Swindon has been quite nicely documenting check out her Twitter timeline for some details. He was previously tweeting things like, Whatever common ground we may have with Lib Dems and some Tories on Brexit, I can't forgive them for what they've done to my area. And also saying that he would never put on a yellow rosette. And that you would never leave, but you... But yet, suddenly this man, with the only principles being that how he looks in the mirror and his own self-importance, has defected to the Liberal Democrats. It is a damning indictment of the state of centrism in this country, while everyone prattles on about how bad populism is, that the man clearly has no overriding principles whatsoever. He will just go to any port in an old rancid storm. But what did we expect? With Change UK now in absolute tatters and Change.org, the campaigning petition website, st- staking claim to their name, please, please let it be that Chukka Umuna's days are numbered as a politician. But there is one story this week which is far more important than any of those, and it is, of course, the two-year anniversary of the Grenfell fire. The night our eyes changed. Rooms where love was made and unmade 
in a flash. There has been several stories this week which stood out for me, not least Channel 4 News, who did a very good investigation into the situation with cladding still in this country after over two years of government in action. You have leading Grenfell campaigner Rhys Morris, who is in jail at the minute, with many people calling for him to be released. You have the legal battle in the US, which has been opened over the companies who supply the cladding and insulation. But ultimately, you still have the inaction of the government and politicians over the social murder, as John McDonnell called it, of 72 people. I think, as always, one of the best voices out there on what happened at Grenfell is my very good friend, Loki. So... I'm going to let him do some of the talking for this before we get on to the next part of the show. Words cannot express. Please allow me to begin though. 1.30 a.m. Heard the shouting from my window. People crying in the street watching the burning of their kinfolk. Grenfell Tower now historically a symbol. People reaching from their windows. Screaming for their lives. Pleading with their cries. Trying to reason with the skies. They all youth birth champions. Comparison is clear though. That every single person in that building was a hero. So don't judge our tired eyes in these trying times Cause we've been breathing in cyanide the entire night They say Yassin saw the fire and he ran inside Who thought that would be the site where he and his family died The street is like a graveyard, tombstone lurching over us Those shouting out to the windows, now wish they never woke them up Wouldn't hope your worst enemy to go in this position Now it's flowers for the dead and printing posters for the missing Come home in the faces of all those that witness this innocence in the faces of all those on the missing list he hopes unfulfilled ambitions never achieved no I'm not the only one that sees the dead in my dream strive for the bravery of Yassin artistic gift of Khadija every person a unique blessing to never be repeated soaring above this week's top stories I'm free flying with I would say it is pretty safe to say that of the 7 billion odd people on this planet, there are very few who in some way, shape or form do not like the arts. Whether that be music, dance, theatre, painting, spoken word, poetry, sculpture or fashion. I, I, I think it's safe to say most people on this planet would say they have an interest in one of those. And that is why it's such an important subject to me, because as people know me for professionally and personally, I am big on political and social messages being conveyed via the arts. I think it's crucial. I think it's really, really important because we can get a message to people who are quite often maybe not politically engaged. And my guest on this week's Free Flying With section is no exception to that rule. This gentleman has got a fantastic campaign out with some very, 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 very good friends of mine and it centres around the Department for Work and Pensions, DWP, yes. So I'm very, very, very pleased to introduce you. I'm very pleased to have him on the show. I've already been speaking to him off air and he's great. I love him already. This is graphic activist Void One. Void One, thank you so much for coming on the podcast to talk about what you are doing with some mates of mine at the Hemp Trading Company. Thank you for coming on. No, thank you very much for having me. Absolute legend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really. No, thank you for coming on. It's great to have you here. So let's get straight on to what you guys are doing. So it's you and the Hemp Trading Company have released a campaign called Fit for Work. People may have seen this on Twitter because it's been getting some uh, leverage, if you like, on social media. Lots of people sharing it already. So what is this Fit for Work campaign? What are you and the Hemp Trading Company doing First of all, I'm working with the temp uh, trading company with the Fit for Work T-shirt. It features some like iconic imagery of one of what uh, some of my activism. Basically, I, I, I travel around writing Fit for Work on job centres and drawing murder scene outlines with limbs missing and things like that to try and draw awareness to the the victims of you know, the sanctions regimes that are being arbitrarily rolled out across the country that are having a devastating impact on people's lives. So I've been doing that for a while. I've let one of the people that's kind of been an inspiration for uh, why I do the campaign 
has recently been sanctioned again. She faces homelessness. She's now facing a shortfall of £5,000, which may or may not be clerical error. But while she has to fight this appeal, which may take six months to a year, you know, the stress and anxiety that tops up on top of her illness that leaves her housebound. She takes, uh, you know, a cocktail of meds every day. She, she she doesn't need that. It doesn't help her with her healing and her recuperation or, or the management of, of her condition. So that's infuriated me. So, you know, I, I was already doing the fit for work thing. She was an inspiration. But now that they're planning to throw her on the street, I'd like to use the imagery from some of my campaign to help raise awareness and raise some money for her living costs while she fights the appeal. That's where the hemp trading company have come in, THTC. They've been absolutely amazing. They've put out a t-shirt on a pre-order, which you can get from their shop online. And 30% of all the money that's raised through that will go to the Raise the Ruth campaign. The stickers as well online, you can buy them from my website. That's voidone.uk. We're donating money from those towards the campaign as well. There's a crowd funder called Raise the Roof. So there's a, a way that you can directly contribute to her living costs to help support her while she fights this dreadful appeal. And also there's a way that we can share the message and more broadly talk about some of the, the problems that are facing disabled people and terminally ill people and, and, and mentally ill people around the country at the moment. Why do you feel so strongly, apart from the, the personal experience with I, your friends? I think it, 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 it's out of raw frustration and my inability to be able to do anything to help these people. I am frustrated, I am angry, and I have no outlet for that frustration or anger bar vandalising things. And if I'm going to vandalise things, uh, I, I want it to be written on the doorsteps of the people that are directly causing causing the problems it, it built up because I, I did some of the job center stuff they tried to cover it up with tiny you know bits of cardboard they tried to put downplay it as you know is it a protest is it not in the media and it was quite obviously a protest and it just became a metaphor for kind of how they've tried to cover up what's been going on because the media narrative doesn't talk about 130,000 excess deaths since 2010 in england alone it doesn't talk about 43 percent of disabled uh, people who, who go for uh, disability allowance or for their PIP assessments, they're trying to commit suicide. 43% of people who reach out to get help are trying to commit suicide. These statistics are sobering, but we're not talking about them. And so that's, that's, that, it's that frustration that we're, we're not talking about it that makes me feel like I need to stick it in people's faces. You can't cover this up. And, and until you stop, I'm going to write it bigger and bigger and bigger basically that's kind of that's my motivation as well because it, it sometimes seems like you're trying to climb a mountain with this because it is such a huge issue and as you say the statistics are absolutely damning i mean the one that i wrote about a lot and that always stands out for me is that when you combine the people who were declared fit for work or, or people who had applied for personal independence payment but hadn't yet had their claim resolved and who died either after they were found waiting, fit for work yeah. or or while they're waiting for benefits it works out 30 people a day are dying um it's tragic it's, it, it's, it's not even tragic it's a national scandal it is scandalous that this is happening in in one of the richest countries on the planet that we're treating the most vulnerable in our society like that I, it's sickening I have no words. And it, and it beggars belief, as you say, the media, while in some quarters you have the likes of The Guardian and The Mirror, who kind of, well, they sort of do a hokey-cokey with the issue. They kind of put one leg in and then one leg back out again. They never really get to the nuts and bolts, in my opinion, of the issue. But as you say, a lot of the media are absolutely silent. So, I mean, what you what you do is fantastic. I, I, I love the sort of the directness of of your work and your campaigning, literally taking taking the message straight to the perpetrators of this. So I think it's brilliant. All power and, and respect to you for doing that. Um, so briefly, I just want to know a bit more about you because you were sort of you were an unknown quantity to me because <coughs> you're you're not on Twitter as we had a conversation in an email thread. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I don't exist in the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. No, you're you're a nobody, Mister Void One. <laughs> no, but you're not on Twitter. So how did you start off sort of doing art and specifically sort of graph, as it were? Where where did this come from? Uh, that's another funny story as well. I mean, I've, I've always done art from a very young age. I, I've got ADHD. I, I, you know, I was part of Valium from the age of two. I come from a broken home. I've, you know, I've got a jaded, you know, story as, as much as anybody else. But art's always been like a meditation for me, a way of calming my internal dialogue and finding a little bit of peace. So I, I, it's always been there. I, I did music for a long time. But over the last five years, I, I've got back into graph. I've got back into painting. And then through that process of 
you know, painting again. I, I guess the political stuff has come back into into the fore. I'm not a political. I would never consider myself, or in the past, to have been a political activist. But I find myself more and more leaning towards that kind of work. But it has to come from the heart. It has to have conviction. Otherwise, it, it seems contrived. Or like you're, I don't know, an angry 17 year old doing a political science, you know, course or something. It it, it, it can come across really badly or poorly voiced. Do you know what I mean? So. I'm always very cautious about doing this kind of stuff, but like I say, I, I've been driven out of frustration to, to have to make my I, my point now. I don't want to look back in five years and think, oh, what did you try and do? What did you do? I did nothing. I stood by and watched these people die. They're, and they're my friends and family. I know a lot of people that are suffering these sanctions that are getting sent letters like at Christmas to tell them they have another appeal to deal with just after New Year. And it's just, it's they don't realise the trauma and and suffering you know suffer, suffering that the an anxiety that these letters cause and that stress is a major cause of disease do you know what i mean so it, it makes me feel like they just want to they're out to kill my friends <laughs> i i don't know how to explain it i think you've explained it perfectly well don't don't doubt your words my friend please as you are on the money at the end of the day this is a systematic systemic attack on people in society who for whatever reason find themselves on the bottom rungs because society has put them there and we're all one paycheck away from you know living on the streets it only takes one accident before you need that safety net and they're slowly stripping away things that we fought for for decades and they're taking it away and they're taking it away quickly and if if we're not careful, we'll blink and it won't be there and it will be you they're coming after. So it's OK for you, Jack, now. But, you know, when, when you when you need some help because you broke your leg at work, who are you, you going to go to when your fr friends and family can't help you? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's disgusting. We pay for this. We already pay for it. We've already paid for it. We pay with national insurance and they're trying to take it from us. That is the bottom line, and I think that is one of the most powerful mediators in there out this, that anyone could be one, one step, one car journey, one, one diagnosis at a doctor's away from needing the welfare state when it's there. So I, I always think that's the, sort of the most on-point argument you can make, as it were. It's been brilliant chatting to you, Void One, just briefly, so people can get involved. All the links will be on the show notes. The T-shirts the aren't out yet, are they? When are they going to be available from? <laughs> I think it's the 5th of July. It's early. It'll be within the first week of July. All the pre-orders will be sent out, but you can buy a pre-ordered T-shirt from their website now for £25. Like I say, 30% of that goes to Raise the Roof. You can go to my website, www.voidone.uk, and if you go and check out my blog, there's a complete write-up of what the project's about. There will be another write-up very shortly about the Raise the Roof, the exhibition that we're putting together to to help raise her living costs and stuff, some of the people that are involved. Failing that, you know, buy the stickers, download the artwork from my website, stick them up in your in your hometown, stick these stickers up in places where people are going to notice them and it's going to piss them off because I need your help now. I can't do this on my own. I'm risking my liberty all the time to do these like these bits of protest, but it's not enough. We, we need to do it en masse, basically. And that's where you come in. <laughs> it's a call to arms for want of a better expression <laughs> i think it's the best expression possible and my t-shirts and nicholas are already on pre-order void one it was great to chat to you lovely to lovely to meet you as it were and yeah, I, too, I think what you're doing is absolutely brilliant so keep it up for the minute void one thank you so much for coming on the podcast thank you very much sir time for you guys to be uncaged because twitter chirps back Yes, it's that part of the show where you get to have your say on the week's top stories. You won't get that on the BBC Question Time, will you? It is Twitter Chirps Back. Every Thursday I put out a tweet, you lot reply to it, and I read out the comments on air. And I've had loads this week. It's I have to say, actually, it's lovely to see so many people interacting with me on Twitter surrounding the podcast. Not least Twitter Chirps Back, but also my requests for your songs which sum up the week's news. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you guys getting involved. So, Twitter Chirps Back, yes. What have people been saying this week uh where are we right first we're off to i'm a jsa claimant you all know who that is hello jsa he tweeted at me i'm surprised nobody mentioned this this week saw a supreme court ruling that says it's unlawful to expect families to use money they need for basic living expenses to pay their rent it's an important decision that sets a significant precedent but received little attention yes the details of this will be in the show notes but as jsa claimant quite rightly points out it is setting a very important precedent the challenge with this is of course we've had numerous court precedents 
government set, not least surrounding universal credit and other welfare payments. But of course, do the government act? They only act with the last second when they're forced to buy a court again. And quite often we see very little improvement. So yes, link in the show notes. This is an important case, but will we actually see any change? Hmm, I'm sorry, I'm slightly doubtful. Next up, the lovely Benefits News. Hello, Benefits News, who've replaced their avatar on Twitter with a fox with Jeremy Corbyn's head on it. I'm not sure what that actually means. I'll have to ask them. But anyway, uh, they tweeted that cocaine prime minister at number 10 pending. Should this country not set better standards? Esther McVeigh led some early losers, 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 and thank the reigning heavens for that. Or should say a couple of potheads knocked out, stoned the crows, LOL. Yes, of course, I discussed this earlier in the show. It is our drug-taking candidates to be the next Prime Minister. But seriously, actually, Benefits News, cocaine Prime Minister at number 10 pending. Don't narrow it down, does it really, with this field of shit shows? But yes, we should. Well, no, I don't think we should be setting better standards, Benefit News, necessarily. I've no issue with people taking drugs, obviously. The point is that these people have taken drugs, and then they've done absolutely hypocritical actions to penalise poor people who take drugs after the event. That's my issue with it. But yes, cocaine Prime Minister pending incoming very soon. Two comments rather similar. The amazing Pause Radio, my man in the booth, who does all my sound engineering for me, he said, why do the Tories get to choose their leader when it should be a general election and the people decide? It's not a democracy, it's a democracy. P.S. Glad McVile got knocked out early with the lowest votes. Yes, ha ha ha. And Paula Peters, hello Paula, brilliant disability rights campaigner. She tweeted, Esther McVeigh coming last in Tory leadership challenge, karma deserved. Yes, it was quite lovely to see the egotistical narcissist Esther McVeigh knocked down a peg or two by coming last in the Tory leadership race, I have to say. But unfortunately, that doesn't necessarily rule out her coming back to the cabinet when a new prime minister is selected. I personally believe she is one of the most dangerous politicians in this country, along with Anna Soubry, because they create this facade of that somehow they're nice and caring and jolly and and they're quite funny and they go on television programs. Actually, they are peak nefariousness and we need to be extremely wary of people like them. We have a new person joining Twitter chirps back. It is Jill at Jilly284. Hello, Jill. She put this very interesting link in for me. She said, 200,000 hashtag UK mortgage prisoners, mortgages sold onto vulture funds over 10 years, paying 6% servicing but told can't afford to pay less. Which MPs will support the urgent action needed for change? Now, this is a very interesting campaign. I hadn't seen this, actually. It's um, You can follow them on Twitter. It's at Mortgage Prison, and I will put a link to it in the show notes. Hmm, I think I'll be following up on this. It's extremely interesting. Jill, thank you so much. Please get involved next week again. Then across the lovely Alex Tiffin, Universal Credit Sufferer at Respect is Vital. Hello, Alex. Thank you for commenting again. Oh, he gave me a bit of a list. Um, my response to that was good grief. He put, one, the media silence after Mike Pompeo's remarks on Jeremy Corbyn. Two, Greenpeace oil rig occupation. Three, Waspy Woman case. Four, Dump Metro DWP lies ongoing campaign. Five, DWP suddenly accept a UN visit report, just not liking the tone. Six, tanker sabotage. That is, of course, Iran. And then he added in another one, which was number seven, NHS Trust charging for certain operations. Operations, which is, of course, the operations that the NHS scrapped last year because they were ineffective. Yes, all very important stories, Alex, especially Mike Pompeo's remarks. You did an absolutely brilliant article this, and I'm glad to see it had so many reads. Picking up where the media should be. Alex Tiffin, Universal Credit Sufferer, excellent work on that. And yes, Green- Greenpeace All Rig Occupation. If you haven't seen that, it's going on in Scotland in a minute. You can also check out Alex's timeline for that. Very, very important stories. And yes, don't forget to dump the metro as well, actually. Yes, quick dump as many as you can. There's people... <laughs> There's been people pouring water on them as well this week, which was quite amusing. So great to see that campaign still going. Another new commenter, Hibs, hello, Hibs, at jhibbets91. He said, quick coverage of Iran and America and the role that Tories could play in this. Um, Right, if you want quick, it's quick. Yes, of course, we had the blowing up of these oil tankers this week, which everyone is already pinning on Iran, despite actually no evidence being there in the public sphere saying it was them. The Sabres are rattling for war across the Western world. You had Jeremy Hunt come out saying that, yes, that we have intelligence to show that it was almost definitely Iran, and he was mocking Corbyn, saying that um, there should, we need to have hard and fast evidence of the fact it was Iran. One little interesting note which Nicola C. Jeffrey the love of my life the gorgeous Nicola Jeffrey follow her on Twitter it's at Nicola C. Jeffrey she pointed out that the Japanese Prime Minister just a few days before made the first visit to Iran in nearly 40 years this was very very interesting it looks like Japan who kind of sit on the fence quite often when it comes to geopolitical matters but were swerving towards the West more in the past few years have suddenly come out and, and made the state visit to Iran could we see a change in geopolitical structures with Japan beginning to align more to Iran Russia and China that could be very interesting. The China one, I'm not so sure about, but watch that space. Thawing of Japanese relations with Iran. Very, very interesting. Cheers to Nicola for that. 
And very quickly, Lady Devushka, that's at Iris Stylosa, said, Pompeo threatening to intervene to stop Corbyn reaching number 10, totally ignored by our BBC. Yes, they did ignore it as well, actually. And as last note, Alex Tiffin said, we've got to cover all bases with all these stories he threw at me. And Benefits News said, quite LOL, he'll handle it, ha, 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 ha. And put a gif of a licky goat. As I said to Benefits News, I can speak quicker than that goat can lick. And I can also lick quicker than that goat as well. But that's another story. That is it for this week's Twitter Chirps Back. As always, Thursday night, make sure you watch my timeline and tweet. We're going out. You can get involved airing your dirty news laundry. BBC Question Time will not give you that. And here's this week's banger in Revolutionary Bird Song. I'm always humbled when I have musical legends on this podcast, and I have had some, from the Grammy-nominated protégé to the incredible Julian Casablancas from The Strokes, and this week's guest is no exception to that rule. With a career spanning over 50 years, he is quite literally, quite literally, reggae royalty, and I am so humbled and excited to have him on the show because he has a new song out from a forthcoming album, and let me tell you now, it is absolutely stunning but we will get into that later this is very exciting I'm thrilled to be able to introduce the incredible the incomparable Clinton Fearon Clinton thank you so much for coming on the podcast it is a real real treat to have you on Oh, Steve, you're most welcome, man. It's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> no, it's great to be able to chat to you. Let's get straight down to business, Clinton. Um, you have got this fantastic new song out called Time. Uh, it's from a forthcoming album, which is dropping, we think, in September. But what you've done, you've also released it as a EP, because there's three different remixes of Time on there as well. There's a jazz remix, a dub remix, and a Tamo remix. But the actual track, I mean, it. I listen to it and then I listen to it again and I listen to it again and when I repeatedly listen to tracks for in my sort of little musical mind it's a mark of the fact that wow okay this is extremely elegant musically it is gorgeous it's a beautiful beautiful piece of work I, I mean so it's first track off your upcoming album why did you pick time as a theme to go with on on this track the first the first one off the album well you know um uh Time, I think, uh, uh, is a very important uh, uh, subject that sometimes we slight. You know, we don't respect time. Sometimes we don't respect our own time. We don't respect somebody else's time. Or we respect our time but not others. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and oftentimes we will say, you know, boy, only if I had time. But sometimes we had time and we didn't make use of it. You know, so the song is depicting how, how important time really is, you know. And then when we when we um, recorded the, the recorded the album and and figured well we want to do an yeah, EP, you know. Me and my wife we sat down and and we think which song should we uh, you know, and we came up with time. And then we also came with the idea that, hey, if we make, you know, several versions of the same song, you know, it would be interesting. <laughs> Time in terms of you, Clinton. I mean, as I said in the introduction, you've, you've been in this business now for over 50 years. Did you think when you, you started out all those decades ago that you would have had such a, a remarkable career that spanned so much time as it has was it did you ever have an <laughs> inkling that, that this would have been your life as it were you know when i started out i started out thinking as far as this can take me i will go with it you know not knowing how far i would go and i realized i also gave my i also always see myself at 10 percent heading for the hundred you know, because of my age today, I would say, well, okay, I'm at 25, maybe 30. You know, still have 70% to go. You know what I mean? So I keep on learning, and each day, each time I take up my guitar, I learn a little something more. You know, and a little something more, and a little something more, which 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 also keeps me humble. You know, and I never forget the first time I saw the scatterlights. You know, I was nine years old and decided, boy, that's what I want to do. I was far back in the audience from them. I didn't even see the personnel, uh, like to say, oh, that's Tommy or that's who I, because I didn't know them, you know, but I couldn't even see the features to know, say, okay, that's, if I see that person again, I will know him, 
you know. But I know what they were doing was so nice, and I was so inspired. You know, um, I went away, and a year later, I made me a guitar. You know what I mean? And uh, I never stop. I never stop. You know. And yes, I, in some way, I could say, well, you know, I've wasted some time uh, where I could be more productive with the time in the younger days. You know what I mean? I could be more productive. Um, um, nevertheless, I was still picking up fragments of the music, listening to uh, R&B and different uh, 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 instrumentation because I kind of love it all, you know. Um, so I was putting little things in my data. Now some of them are coming out. You know, I love jazz, but, you know, I'm, I'm not a jazz player. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm shy about it. You know, um, it's one of what? my... One of, it, no, well, no, no, it's one of my, it's one of my, uh, um, uh, uh, my, my, my band member earlier on, not in the group anymore. Actually, two of, actually three of them it was Isaac Mills. Isaac Mills, we still play together. Um, Sue and, and Sergio, drummer, you know, uh, they checked me out one time. I did a little something and said, man, you'd be great at that, man. You, you, you should do that some more, you know, and, you know, and, <laughs> and encourage me. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, I, I had this little idea running with for a while and decide, you know what? I'm going to test it this time, you know? And it worked, you know? It's just like um, a Tama, Tama drum. I, I love Tama, but I've never played it. But I, yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated with it. Okay. Um, uh, 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 when, we, when we did the EP, I'm figuring, well, what can we do with the with the with, with, with the foot uh, the foot version? Well, you know what? I'm gonna try the Tama because we have a friend in Senegal who actually brought back one. He, he learned that I love the Tama. I asked him to get one for me. <laughs> he brought but one for me for free. Didn't take any money for me. <laughs> for me. For, you know, and I said, you know, okay, you know, I should exercise doing that. And you know, I went there at the studio, the first cut. And I tried to do it again, and I couldn't do it better, so I just leave it like it is and just put a arm on it to it. <laughs> I love you that. Know, so, like I said, so I, 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 I keep learning, and, and doors keep opening up, and, and, and I'm feeling good about it. And uh, what I can say, nothing is impossible once, once the breath is, is breathing. You know, nothing is impossible once you really love it from the bottom of your heart, whatever it is. That is very, very true. And I, I love the story about the tamar drum. The tamar drum is, is an African instrument for anyone who doesn't know. And I love the fact you picked it up and the first take was the best one. That's just, that's just great. And I love that kind of musicality of being able to experiment and, t and turn your hand to anything. And that kind of leads me into what I want to talk about next, because as you touched on in your answer just then, you kind of have turned your hand to jazz. And it, you are absolutely brilliant at it. Has, has jazz always sort of been something you have had an affinity with had an affection towards is it always something that's piqued your interest well it does pique my interest but you know i'm i'm not knowledgeable enough to, you know but you know spiritually it do grab me you know especially ones that do got a bounce you know the ones that gone out too much on the limb there and it's all about notes and thing like that and the rhythm is gone it lose me you i know? agree but once yeah. Once there's a rhythm for me to bounce with, you know, then I can respect and appreciate the notes, you know, and, and because I love melody, I love melodies, I love harmonies, I, you know, I love when things are in, are in tune and, and bouncing with each other, you know what I mean, right? Like nature does, you know, like, just like nature, you know, um, in, in harmony, you know, so I, I love that. But I never consider myself um, a, 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 a jazz person per se. You know, I um, grew up in Jamaica. Um, you know, that's why reggae is my is my forte because that's what I grew up with from the streets. You know what I mean? And okay, and I try to keep it real. I don't try to go more than what I can do or what seem okay for me. You know what I mean? Um, uh, uh, you know, I hear some some downside stuff that is, oh, all right, that's what is interesting. But in the same breath, I'm not a downside person. I'm more in the, in the root spiritual uh, 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 vibes of, 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 of the music. 
Yeah, and I try to keep it there. And also, I love to touch on, you know, political aspect, but not just that. You know, there's the dark side, but there's also the bright side. That's why most most of my songs, you know, uh, yeah, if there's a little darkness, there's still a light at the end of the tunnel. There's something there that's pointing to the light at the end of the tunnel. Because I have, I have confidence in us as mankind, as people, you know, uh, uh, to make things better. And I think we can do it if we realize how much our, our input, uh, uh, our personal input and together input can make a big difference. You know what I mean? If we only can see that, you know, um, sometimes we get too selfish and, 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 and nothing gets done and we just want everything for ourselves and, you know, from I'm okay, then to help the others. When, you know, that's not it. That's why nature, again, if we look back to nature a little bit, you know, everything is in harmony. What else can we be expecting, just to wrap us up, Clinton, what else can we expect from the album? And it's, it's September it's coming out, isn't it? Uh, September is coming out. Can I say a uh, uh, collaboration? Like, <laughs> you decide. <laughs> hey, well, you know, there's an artist in Africa that I, that I love quite a bit. And I went there last year. Was it last year? It went there last year and we met and we talked and, you know, and, and uh, talking about Alpha Blondie. Alpha Blondie. And so, we, yeah, so we did a song together, which will be on the album as well. It's called, and the title is, it's called Together Again. You know, it's also, it's also touching and, you know, it was, it was heartwarming going there and the reception and thing like that, meeting him and, you know, um, some Rasta brethren there and other people met me, at, met us at the, at the airport, you know, and play songs and play repeat uh, drums and, you know, I, we were tired, but I had was to join in and sing with them and thing like that. You know, it was wonderful. And then uh, during all the time with the you know, people just took so excellent care of us. And, you know, I had was to write about it. So I wrote about it and, and you know, and, 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 and talk with Alpha if they would come in on me with, with and yes, he did, you know. And <laughs> so it's one of my favorite tracks on there, you know. But it's also, you know, it's, 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 it's like a welcome home back, you know. But... I extend it into say, well, then, hey, you know, where are black or white? You know, hey, Africa need to unite, you know, um, and, but people need to unite, you know. You use the one thing to, 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 to catch several birds, you know what I mean? It's like going in a positive way. That sounds absolutely brilliant. I'm, I'm looking forward to that already. So it's been such a pleasure to have you on my po podcast and such a pleasure to be able to talk to you. It's been absolutely fascinating listening to your perspective on things and also, and also hearing a bit about what's to come from you for the rest of this year. Clinton, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. You're most welcome, Steve. Thanks for having me, man. And I hope we all get something from this i already get something from this because i i see i see your uh, your energy to i feel your energy i see your energy towards it and I, I see that you're real continue to do what you do my brother that's really kind thank you clinton and thank you for coming on cheers all right cheers <laughs> wow what a legend Clinton Fearon is. It just absolutely fascinating. I said I said after the interview, I could have just kept chatting to him for hours, quite frankly. He is absolute delight to speak to. So insightful, so eloquent, and such a wealth of knowledge and musical talent as well. And here it is, his latest track, the first one off his forthcoming album, which will be out in September. This is the fantastic time. This is Clinton Fearon with Time. Believe it or not, time never stop. Keeps on going and it will not drop. Believe it or not, time never wait.
And that's it. Series 2, Episode 7 of Top Line Caged is done. I'd like to thank my fantastic guest this week, Incredible Void One. He's not on Twitter, but you can follow the hemp trading company as THTC Clothing. I'd also like to thank the incredible legendary Clinton Fearon. Follow him on Twitter. It's at Clinton Fearon. As always, wind the scenes. Thank you to the love of my life, the gorgeous Nicola Jeffrey. Follow her on Twitter. It's at Nicola C. Jeffrey. My man behind the booth, Sound Engineer Gav Pause. Follow him on Twitter. It's at Pause with Z Radio. And my in house singer, it's Ray Star Music. Follow her on Twitter. It's at Ray underscore Star 113. Thank you to the Canary for Uncaging Me. I will see you next week. Uncaged.